Today I'm kicking off my road to my PPL series, I'll be talking about my class 2 medical, let's get right into it. Hello YouTube, I'm Pilot Stad and welcome back to a very different video. Today I'll be talking about how I got my CAA Class 2 Medical, which means I can fly solo for my PPL here in the United Kingdom. This is the first video in my road to my PPL series where I'll be showing you guys how I get my PPL in the not so distant future hopefully. I should say this, is, this video is more designed for the UK pilots among us but a lot of it will apply internationally. You guys have put some medical questions across to me. I'm not going to answer them all and I can't answer some because I'm not an aeromedical examiner or a doctor. But if you do have any questions regarding the process, be sure to put them in the comments and I'll try and answer them as soon as I can. If you've got any big medical questions, then of course go to a doctor, not me. But without further ado, let's get right into this video. So what is a class 2 medical? Well, it's basically a little certificate that an aeromedical examiner will issue you after you pass the medical exam. It means you can fly solo. For your PPL and it's required for your PPL license. If you don't know what that is, it's a private pilot's license. Class 2 is the mid tier of all the of all the medicals. You've got class 3 as well and class 1 right at the top. Class 1 means you can fly commercially for the airlines for example. But at the moment this is all I need. I did say a while ago I was going to go for my class 1. I thought it would be safer to go for a class 2 just to see if there's any issues with me before I pay £600, £700 to go for a class 1. I went away to Norwich Airport, a Saxon Air Terminal right near to Norwich Airport, to see Dr. Peter Brugman, who works at Examine Air. It took about 40 minutes from a medical, done and dusted, got my certificate printed off. Now I'm going to talk about the medical, but first let's head over to Saxon Air. The next stop will be Norwich. You can change your Norwich from Great Anglia Local Services to Great Armour. So here I am at Examine Air with Saxon Air. It's a, basically a small business terminal right next to Norwich Airport. It is a boiling day and I can't wait to get in basically. My appointment's at 2 o'clock and as you can see now it's uh, got what, 18 minutes time. So yeah, I'm quite excited, a little bit nervous but I'm sure I'll be fine. Going into the class 2 medical it's going to cost me around £240 uh, which is more on the steep side. But I mean, it's local to me, this is very local and you only have to do an initial one month so I don't really care about spending that much money on one thing, although you could get some good flight hours out of it. I'm not really worried about any aspect of my health but it'll be interesting to see how I do. I'll be, I'll be inside in a minute, I'll then go through my medical, I'll probably then swap back to home and I'll go through my experience and whether or not of course I got my class 2 medical which is suitable for your PPL in the UK. See you then guys. So here we go, just passed my class 2 medical. It went really well actually, um, a bit less than I was expecting really, it cost me £240 so I guess I can't complain about what it was. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy to have passed it. I'll see you back at home and I'll talk about the medical and how it went, but there we go. So yes, yesterday I went to Saxon Air, took the train and bus to get down there, did some plane spotting while I was there. Sat around for about half an hour outside watching the planes, went inside, met the doctor. Seemed like a very nice guy, he actually built his own German biplane which is very cool, I'll put a photo of that on the screen now but yeah, really nice guy I've got to be honest I went in there slightly worried as I say in the film from there but I don't really know why I was because it turns out there wasn't too much to worry about I'm not going to run through the process so I walked in there, um, handed over some photo ID, used my passport then I went over for a urine test, which is fun, that's my first one, I don't really have any major medical issues, so I've never been into hospital, um, or even had to do a urine test, but you just had to, yeah, wee in a little pot. Which was an interesting experience to say the least, but yeah, tests that for blood, sugars and protein I believe, and it came back all fine. After that I was asked, um, 
I was asked to do. Yeah, I was asked to um, strip down into my underwear um, just for a full body examination. Some of it wasn't allowed to do because of the uh, coronavirus, which I guess is probably better. Um, basically, they couldn't look into too, like get too close to me if that makes sense. There was some sort of social distancing. Uh, full body examination, I had to like stand my arms up like this and do like that. It was a bit weird, um, but it was, it was good, it was quick. Um, after that, had an ECG, which is electromagnetic something. Um, it's basically where they stick stickers to you, and then uh, stick wires to you, and it me measures your uh, um, your electric pulses from your heart or something to do with that. I believe that was pretty good. That was good for me, and yeah, it was a bit weird. It was my first time. I, I, as I said, I've never, I haven't been in hospital um, since birth, so it, this wasn't even hospital. This was like a doctor's surgery kind of thing, um, and it was just a kind of interesting medical experience, I guess. After that, well, I just had, I think I had a bit more body examination in terms of walking, um, posture, stuff like that. Then I sat down, uh, spoke a bit more about my medical history as I was, I didn't really have any major medical issues as a child, so that was fine. After that, it was a hearing test and basically where he stood up um, behind me, had to do one ear like that and he'd say a number. And I'd have to repeat that number, easy as that really, um, and yeah, it was easy to pass. Then of course the other ear. Then I was made to stand up and go next to the class 1 medical booth where they do a proper audiogram test. Um, and anyway, turn around and look at one of those Snellen charts, Snellen charts, I don't know, I'll put a photo of it on the screen now. And uh, have an eye test, listen a quick eye test. I actually went um, for an eye test at Specsavers a few months before, so that was good, um, just to see if my eyes were good. And I found out my vision is better than normal, so I've got 6-5 vision, I believe, which means you can see, I can see at 6 feet, while other people can only see at 5. So that was nice, um, yeah, set me up well for my class 1. I mean, it was a pretty easy eye test. It wasn't like, you know, some opticians where they put you in that weird machine thing and take photos of your eyes. It wasn't like that. After that, had a colour color vision test, which is where you see those weird little photos. One on the screen now. Um, and yeah, I'm told to see the number in there. And I messed up on the last one. It was 73, but I didn't see the 7 as 7. I saw it as a 1. Don't know why, because it wasn't anything to do with colour. Probably just nerves. Um, but yeah, I kept messing it up and the doctor was like, no, 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 what does that look like? And I was like, 771, and yeah, it turns out it was uh, whatever it was, yeah. I was, I was <laughs> but that was like the 14th out of 15th one, so I mean, it didn't affect anything, it was perfectly fine. It was just a mistake on my behalf. After that, uh, I had a lung function test where you blow into one of those tubes. Although I'm not too sure if they have something to do with COVID, it wasn't a full one or something, um, but yeah. A lot of stuff was, of course, taken away because of COVID, but um, he still gave me the medical and he clearly knows what he's doing. So, yeah. Then after that, just sign a bit of paper, sign my medical certificate, and it was done, really. That was all it really was. Also, had a blood pressure um, test, like, where they do the thing around your arm, but everyone knows what they are, so, I mean, I'm not going to talk about that in too much detail. So I walked out uh, with a smile on my face. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. So, I mean, it was... Yeah, it was uh, my first major medical checkup. It was my initial class two medical, which meant it cost a bit more than usual. It was two hundred and forty pounds, which is way above um, the kind of average for the medical, but it was worth it. It was close by. It was local, nice doctor, and it was quick. Forty minutes. Um, they said it took an hour, so I was expecting a bit more, um, just in case they needed to look into anything. But no, it was forty minutes. Um, quite a bit of money still, but yeah, I needed it to get done. And the best thing is my medical certificate doesn't expire uh, for five years. So I'll be working, I'll be flying with my PPL with that uh, for five years time really. And then I can, of course, probably upgrade to class one in the future when I'm looking to go commercial. I've had a lot of people ask me some questions regarding eyesight and glasses. I'd say to that you can wear glasses and your vision really doesn't have to be overly great I mean it just has to be kind of standard vision it can even be worse and you, as I said you can wear glasses and contact lenses as long as it's correctable to a certain standard you should be alright you can have I mean even if you're slightly colorblind or something I think there's that thing um, where you can be limited to daytime flights only or whatever and stuff like that really class 2 medical it's a breeze to pass for most people especially people my age I would say just before you go, eat healthy and don't drink any uh, fizzy drinks because it might affect your urine test. It didn't for me. I drank too much water that was bursting as I was waiting outside. Um, but yeah, 
really nice process and just look around find a good doctor find someone you look that looks good find someone that you can see has a clear passion for aviation because then you won't be sat there um, not talking although if they're an aero medical examiner they probably do have some sort of passion but it was clear that uh, my doctor peter he he had a massive passion for aviation so there wasn't no men in there when we, were, when we weren't talking about planes it's really good though and I'm glad I've gotten it out of the way and I can't wait to get up in the air with my PPL. I hope this has answered some questions for you and uh, yeah I've gone through the process, basically urine test, um, lung function, uh, height and weight kind of stuff, BMI, uh, but, 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 what else was it? <laughs> out of my head now, balance and reflexes, stuff like that, blood pressure, Hearing and eye test really, it's kind of your standard medical stuff, you can find it all on the CAA website but it's really nothing to worry about I'd say, um, as long as you're quite fit, quite healthy, do some exercise, I mean I'd say at least like kind of active, you say you do some walking or running every week or whatever, um, yeah it should be fine, there's a dog barking outside so for that but yeah really nothing to worry about guys. There is some scaremongering stories, um, and unless there's something severely wrong with you, you won't be waiting more than an hour. But yeah, it's, it, it was a, it was a fun process. Well, I wouldn't call it fun, but it was it was less stressful than I thought it was going to be. That's all I can say, really. I hope this video has taught you something. Don't worry about it if you're going to class two medical. Class one sounds like a total different ball game, but class two, as long as you're healthy, as long as you're fit as long as you eat okay I mean I don't eat very well I'll be honest um, but yeah nothing to worry about guys I hope this has helped you out um, I look forward to seeing you in the skies happy landings bye bye